Hello everyone and welcome back to Jus de Rose. Today's video is about the most hated fragrances rated by Instagram. So I didn't personally rate these, though I do agree with some of them, but I asked my audience on Instagram, what is their most hated perfume? And I took the most common answers, compiled all of these fragrances for this video. Now, one of the things with perfume, of course, is that it is hugely subjective. What I like, you may dislike and vice versa. So what I'll be doing is I'll be providing some commentary to some of the, those popular fragrances, but also give you some alternatives to these perfumes. And each time I have two alternatives, a safe one, so one that is a little bit different to the original but not too too much or that I find is better than the fragrance that is hated and also the second option is a more daring one, so something that is bold and really intriguing. So without further ado, let's get into fragrance number one. This perfume has by far exceeded the number of comments. It is La Vie est Belle by Lancôme. Now the comments with this one is that it is sickly sweet, it's headache inducing, and I get it because I feel the same way about it. This fragrance is basically cavity inducing. It is that sweet. What's interesting though with La Vie est Belle is that it is within the gourmand category and it has a big dose of praline, so that like sugary caramel thing going on which you can also find in Angel by Mugler. So instead of going for La Vie Belle that is sickening and headache inducing, I'd recommend going for Flower Bomb by Victor Reinhardt. And very important here, it is the Eau de Parfum not flower bomb nectar because flower bomb nectar is very similar to la vie belle that really like sticky thing going on that is just too much the eau de parfum i find is a great balance it is sweet but is also very floral really pretty scent i used to wear it in high school and also in university and i got a ton of compliments while wearing this perfume i still love it today it smells fantastic and is yeah more of a safer option if you want something that is sweet but that's not going to be headache inducing, if you know what I mean. As for the bolder choice, I would recommend going for a niche fragrance. It is Love Don't Be Shy by Killian. Don't come at me for thinking that I'm saying that the two are similar. Not at all, but they have a similar addictive, sugary, syrupy thing going on. With Love Don't Be Shy, it is more of a floral, sticky, nectar-like feeling coming from the orange blossom. And you have also this note of marshmallows. So it's the sweetness of marshmallow mixed with the sweetness of nectar-like petals. I think Love Don't Be Shy is a safe option, especially when you're considering into entering in the niche category. Okay, the next most hated fragrance is Sauvage by Dior. Yes, it's a men's fragrance, but ladies, you may want to tune in too. Basically, the underlying feedback from my followers is that it is a boring and generic fragrance. I've said it on my channel as well. I don't shy away from saying that I find this perfume smells like an average Joe. It is, to me, not sexy, not appealing, but we're in the minority here because Dior Sauvage is the number one best-selling men's fragrance worldwide. Think about that. I think what it is with Gio Sauvage is that it is a really popular fragrance. Everyone's wearing it, everyone's smelling it, and people might want something a little bit more unique. I don't really like the DNA of the scent. It's a little bit shower gel-like, and yeah, I don't find it to be super refined. Within that category, so as a safe choice for guys or ladies, if you're looking to purchase a gift for your husband or your boyfriend, I would recommend going for Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. And I just wanna say that Bleu de Chanel was one of the first blue fragrances, so those like everyday, freshy, compliment getting perfumes for men. It came out before Dior Sauvage. So Dior made Sauvage as an attempt to steal market share from Bleu de Chanel. I am convinced and well, they managed to do that because it is hugely popular and they probably have millions behind their advertising. Nonetheless, Bleu de Chanel, in my opinion, smells more refined, classy. It has that Chanel touch, that Chanel sophistication that I'm sorry, but Dior Sauvage does not have. So I would recommend the Eau de Parfum over Sauvage any, any time. Now, if you're looking for a more bold alternative, I would go for Gentle Fluidity Silver by Maison Francis Kyokjan. It has this like freshy DNA that is also really long lasting and projects like crazy. So it is a good, fresh smelling perfume that has fantastic performance. And it is more in the gin and tonic kind of vibe. Highly complimented, long lasting, versatile, and just a solid, all round, easy going, niche 
beige fragrance for men. Next up, we have Angel by Mugler, and I did touch upon it a little bit at the beginning of this video, but essentially this perfume is super polarizing. It created an entirely new category in perfumes, which is the gourmand category. So it has this like really sticky, praline, caramel-like thing going on with patchouli and also a big dose of ethyl maltol that is gonna give the effect of spun candy, so like candy floss kind of thing going on. I don't like Angel either. I think if you have grown up with it, you probably will still enjoy it today. It is that kind of like, either nostalgic or really a love-hate relationship with the scent. So with that in mind, thinking about the structure of Angel and the fact that it is so intoxicating, so sticky, with this like really syrupy patchouli background going on that is not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, the fragrance that I would recommend within that category, but that is fresher and more mineral, is Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. So it is a Chypre composition. It's not a gourmand perfume, but you have this patchouli thing going on in the background. There is some sweetness, but it is refreshed with citruses in the top. This makes Coco Mademoiselle much more wearable than Angel, and it has that touch of class and sophistication that you'll find in the rest of the Chanel range. As for the more daring option, I would recommend going for Mont Guerlain by Guerlain. Now you're gonna tell me they don't smell the same at all. And that is kind of the point. And the reason why I chose this fragrance is that it has something disruptive about it in a similar way that Angel did back in the day. So with Mont Guerlain, it is a sweet fragrance. You have a big dose of vanilla, there's some white florals, it's womanly and feminine, but the sweetness is slashed through with lavender. And lavender is typically associated with men's fragrances, it's quite a masculine ingredient. And Guerlain was the first, if not amongst the first, to really use a big dose of lavender in their feminine fragrance. Since then, there's been a few brands that have done that. I'm thinking about YSL with Libre or even Maison Margiela with Coffee Break, but Guerlain, as far as I'm concerned, was the first one to do it. Because of the lavender, it is more refreshing and it makes it more wearable for an everyday basis. A nice perfume from Guerlain, again, not one that I would wear because I'm not into super sweet perfumes, but if you are and you're looking for something that has a bit of an edge, this one certainly does. The next most hated fragrance really breaks my heart because I love it. It is Black Orchid by Tom Ford. This to me is a masterpiece of a perfume. Tom Ford does fragrances like no other designer, kind of like, you know, Mugler. Mugler does their own thing. Tom Ford, it's all about being provocative, bold and like his fragrances get people talking. I think that's like the point of his line is to have controversies, people having different opinions on his fragrances that are very divided and for sure Black Orchid is that kind of scent which is why I think some people really dislike it. There is a lot going on in this perfume. As an alternative to Black Orchid that is more enhanced with the florals, I'd recommend you try Givenchy L'Interdit Intense. This is a little mini that I have. How cute is it? But essentially, this is a gothic floral with notes of tuberose and orange blossom. Like, this is a badass chick. Like, she's, she's beautiful and really badass. Really intoxicating scent. Definitely one for the evening, just like Black Orchid. So it's quite bold, but at the same time, still much more wearable than Black Orchid. For the daring option, that is still much more tame, by the way, than Black Orchid, I would recommend you try Bois d'Orient by Amor Oud. So you're gonna find some similarities with this fragrance to Black Orchid. It shares similar notes like the Ylang Ylang. There's also some woods and spices. Ultimately, Bois d'Orient is a very different scent. What I like about it is that it has a delicious, dark chocolate opening and then as the fragrance develops on the skin it will die down to leave place for spices and woods. So overall you're gonna get a chocolatey woody spicy scent that smells really unique. The next one is Black Opium by YSL and this is another one that I agree with. I don't really like it either. It is this like really creamy sweet vanilla coffee fragrance. To be fair to me this smells more of a latte so a milky coffee. There are some alternatives that I would recommend. And the first one, if you like like the creaminess of black opium and also how strong and potent it is, the fragrance that is like strong and potent that has a little bit of coffee 
coffee as well is Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. Now mind you, the coffee isn't front and center in this perfume. This one is really all about the creaminess and you're gonna get a distinctive almondy touch. You're going to find also some white florals in this fragrance with jasmine and tuberose. It is intoxicating, it is sexy, it's sweet as well, but it's not sweet in a vanilla sugary kind of way. It's sweet in a milky way, which I find makes this fragrance a little bit more interesting. As for the daring option, I have a true coffee scent that is also unisex, by the way. It is Awake by Acro. This smells like freshly ground coffee. Like imagine you're walking into Starbucks and like the scent of coffee lingering in the air whilst you're waiting for your order. That is the coffee that I smell in Awake by Acro. It is very strong, very powerful, really in your face, like bitter, dark coffee. As it develops, you're gonna get more of like some like creamy hazelnutty thing going on so it's like more of a hazelnut coffee effect and as it continues to dry down the sweetness is more gonna pull through so it's not gonna be ever as sweet as black opium which is why I personally prefer awake and I would wear it myself because it's not sickening overall this is a bold and daring coffee scent polarizing definitely so sample it if you can but an interesting take on coffee next up we have another Mugler fragrance with the alien and I totally get why this is hugely polarizing and why people don't like it it is a really interesting perfume so this is a floral amber with white florals so you have jasmine amber in the base but there is something going on with this fragrance that gives it to my nose at least almost like a plasticky chemical feel but like that's the kind of thing I want to smell more of in this perfume. It's like very strange. And this could be the scent of a dominatrix. Like it is super sexy, man eater perfume, that kind of vibe going on, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. The first alternative to Alien that I'd propose that is on the safer side is another amber floral. It is so stunning, Rouge Malakite by Armani Privé. You can easily find it in the UK. There, it's available in store, but also online. I think in the US, it's a little bit more complicated. I try to find links for you guys which I always put in the description box to when it's available in the US sometimes it is sometimes it isn't so make sure to check out the description box and see if you can find it I highly recommend you seek it out because it is a stunning stunning perfume Rouge Manakit also has an association of white florals but honestly the dry down with the base the amber base and benzoin is magnificent this like balminess of benzoin and the vanilla facets of it just come out as it warms to your skin it is such a stunning fragrance. My second recommendation would be Addictive Vibration by Initio Parfum Privé. There's going to be a nod to Alien, like especially when I first smelled it, I was like, oh, like this reminds me of Alien, but you're not going to get this like plasticky thing going on. It is more of a standalone fragrance, so you can't really say it is a dupe for Alien. It's very different, but you have a bit of a nod to Alien in Addictive Vibration. White florals, a lot of honey, so it is sweet and it's really going to come out in the base. There's quite a lot of depth. It's a bit earthy and woody as well. There's something that is a little bit naughty going on in the base, which again is a nod to Alien. Great for going out and has a similar purpose as Alien, so I would recommend this one to you. Next up, we have the infamous Chanel number no. five. I mean, of course, this fragrance is another one that is polarizing. Some people love it, some people hate it. I have two alternatives to this fragrance today. The first one, which is the safe choice, would be Chanel number no. five, Lo. So Lo is much fresher it's enhanced in citruses the florals are really transparent so I think it's much easier to wear than the original fragrance for the second option I found a fragrance that has a bit of a nod to the number five but in a more modern way it is danger by Roja Parfum mind you this is the essence de parfum not the original danger I think the original would be closer to Chanel number no. five this one because it's an essence de parfum it's going to be lighter and fresher on the skin interestingly enough the note breakdown is similar to Chanel number no. five, especially when it comes to the florals. So you do have like a vintagey feel about the scent, in my opinion, but it is quite modern and it's yeah, lighter, fresher, easier to wear. To be honest, I have to be in the mood to wear this. But if you like fragrances with a vintage edge that is still modern, then check out Danger Essence de Parfum by Roja. 
And the final most hated fragrance is Baccarat Rouge by Maison Francis Curjean. I personally really like this scent and I enjoy especially mixing it with my other fragrances. I think it's fantastic, but I can understand why some people don't like it. There are a lot of mixed reviews and feelings about this scent and it's one of those perfumes that is really enigmatic and people really smell contrasting things within it. To me, this perfume smells quite sweet. It makes me think of the sugar coating of candy apple but to some other people it smells like the doctor's office or like being at a dentist so it has like a medicinal kind of feeling which I totally get like you don't want to wear a fragrance that makes you think of the dentist because that is just horrifying if you are intrigued by Baccarat Rouge and you do get this medical kind of dentist thing going on I invite you to try Burberry Her from Burberry. Funny enough, it is the same perfumer that created both fragrances. With Burberry Her, I smell like a powderiness I don't get in Baccarat Rouge and more freshness. And I think the powderiness is kind of reminiscent to, you know, like the love hearts, but like in the format of a lollipop. So like imagine a love heart, but in a lollipop, that is a kind of like powdery sweetness that I get from Burberry Her. I think it is a great alternative to Becquin Rouge. Now, if you want something that is different and a little bit more daring, and again, you're not gonna get a dentist vibe from it. It is For Your Love by Mise en Cire. For Your Love by Mise en Cire was created by Alberto Morillas, and it's actually his brand. And I think it's a great fragrance to enter into the niche segment, extremely likable, and you're gonna get a nod to Baccarat Rouge, again, without that like medicinal feel. So to me, this perfume smells like sugared raspberries with a sexy, musky, woody base. Really beautiful fragrance, quite girly as well, hugely compliment getting. Yeah, this smells very nice, and I tend to reach out more for this perfume these days than Baccarat Rouge because it isn't as candy sweet, I find, to my nose personally. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below which of these fragrances you like or dislike. I would love to know. Let's start a conversation in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and remember, spread the fragrant love.